Hey guys, I'm gonna pull some hay samples to send them off to be analyzed. And I'm gonna try out my homemade core deal. This is just a pipe with a little handle on it, and we sharpen up the end. A little sledge and a piece of rebar to get the stuff out. Uh, but you can get drill bits that will drill into these hay bales and you know they're real fancy and they have the bags on them and you just but they're two hundred dollars and <laughs> I'm gonna see if this won't work I really don't want to spend two hundred dollars but I'm out in my my old alfalfa field that is I dissed and planted oats in too so I'm gonna pull a sample out of my oats and alfalfa and I'm gonna set you up here and see if that won't Probably worked pretty good on alfalfa, but it's not working too great on this. So, my phone actually stopped working, but uh, I tried it a couple more times. And no success at all. Um, I'm gonna have to have a drill or some type of drill to just to, to cut it because what it's doing is it's just pushing it in there. Even with those bales being as tight as they are, it's just just not working. So, uh, you know, I mean, I can probably have one here by next week, but. If I don't come up with something else, which I don't think I'm going to, I'm going to try to find a cheaper one than the, the $200 drill, just because it. I don't want to spend $200, but, you know, at the, at the same time, with this type of hay, I want a really accurate core sample, a really accurate feed analysis, that way I can, you know, I can represent the hay for what it is, and hopefully get a premium, because this hay is pretty good hay. I don't want to undersell it. Um, but yeah, so uh, I gotta go mess around with that now, but watering my alfalfa super slowly. I'm just letting it soak. It's been so hot that it's, it's just taking the moisture right out of it. I may get stuck here if I'm not careful. Sorry about that, but yeah, so my hay grazer that I planted is this weather is just cooking it. Um, we've been 98 or 99 or 100 degrees for the past three and a half weeks every single day except for one. So it's just when the weather's like this, you just can't put enough water down. And we don't get rainfall, so um, unless I go 
out a, a minimum till or, or something to really get a good layer of protection on my soil to, to help stop that. And even the guys that are no-till here still have to still have that same problem that I do. And but until then, then I'm gonna probably just grow wheat or something because right now that's just the most beneficial thing that I need. Uh, I did the hay grazer this year, which I didn't. I didn't plan on that circle growing hay grazer. You know, every year I just wanted to do it this year to help get it started, help break the ground, and help get a little little money coming in. But you know, right now we're super super dry. Well, I gotta check check the drip oil in it. But yeah, so I'm gonna go find me a new uh, go buy me a hay probe. I don't want to. I'm gonna put this video up tonight. It's Wednesday, so you know if anybody has an old one that they just want to send me, that'd be great. But I'm not counting on it, so I'm just gonna go try to find one. I'll probably buy it tomorrow or something like that. But yeah. Uh, that's kind of all I really know right now. I'm gonna, I'll show you this though. There's my fertilizer tank, and this is the box, and this is the actual motor. But when I say drip oil, this is what I'm talking about. This little deal, and we'll come down here. And you have to, you have to adjust this every day, actually twice a day. See it just dripping? It's too slow, we need to speed it up just a hair. Okay, what that does, that's a, that's a tin weight oil, and it, it drips down this shaft. It, it goes all the way down the shaft and it lubricates the bearings in the pump. That way your bearings don't burn out and, and we don't have to replace the pump all the time because a pump for this well is about twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. So you don't want that to go out. And so and you can hook that barrel up to it. I don't. Because I just terrible how I have this set up, maybe like this. Now oil is almost like water. It's, it's just a super lightweight oil. And we have to have it to lubricate our, our pump. This is, it's just drip oil. It doesn't tell you the weight of it. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's tin weight, just a straight tin weight oil. That's what it's pretty similar to. Super, super light. <laughs> I think there's some mineral oils that you can buy that are almost heavier than that stuff is. But, yeah, I have to do that, that twice a day, check it. And just make sure our, our pump stays lubricated. And most, most people who have like, we only have one irrigation well. A lot of the big farms, you know, it, especially where there's not much water, I mean, they got a train load of them. So they just put put that tank on there, that 55 gallon barrel drum, and they just put the drip from that. And it's expensive. I think that drum was $400. So it's not as bad as motor oil, but it's still expensive. And I got... That's half, half of what it costs in a five gallon bucket. It's, 
I think a five gallon bucket of that stuff's like 60 bucks at least, if not more. Um, but yeah, here's my, my uh, just oats and peas. But what I, what I was doing with these is when I, when I've done analysis, feed analysis before, I would have places where the, you know, a bale broke or I, I just didn't pick up a windrow or something, mainly where the bales broke. And I would go out and I would pull feed out of that, that deal and select through it and grab feed out of it. And that's what I'd send off for analysis. Uh, and it, it works just fine. It really does. It works quite well, but I would kind of like to be a little more, more, uh, on the ball with this stuff, but yeah, I'm gonna, this made some really, really nice, nice feed. Uh, didn't make as much as I really needed it to, but that's just how, how the world works. That's what happens when you farm in the desert. Everything gets dry and it doesn't do what it needs to, but, you know, keeps other people from coming here and doing it. I guess that's the one positive thing. I don't have, I don't have too terribly, you know, a lot of competition because it's just so hard to do anything. Uh, you're broke all the time, but, you know, whatever. And it's just the one little drawback of the job is you're always broke, but... It's you just got to keep going forward. It's fun, I guess. I, I wouldn't say being broke is fun, but you know, finding ways to go through and and make everything work. You got to you got to stay positive. Um, I got a couple of nozzles on this pivot. I got to go clean out, but yeah. Um, like I said, it, it, and if you guys know of anyone who makes, like you may know what I'm talking about. I I should just be all really good at editing and put a picture of that drill up there so you guys know but it just goes on a like on a screw gun and it's you know 18 inches long something like that and it just drills into the bale and you just clean it out um so you guys who farm probably know what the hell i'm talking about but yeah the one i don't remember the one i saw but it was 190 dollars and that's a lot of money that I don't want to spend on a drill to use, you know, three times this year. That's only, I'm only going to use it three times, but, uh, yeah, that's, if, if there's a cheaper one, you know, a better one, I, you guys know about it, I'd sure appreciate you leaving it in the comments. So, we're getting ready to get back to farming videos, and I gotta haul this hay out and stack it up and... Uh, I'm going to get some videos of that because a guy asked me to do that. I don't want to say Jared because I don't think, I think it's Jay Woodgate. It's South African guy. He's awesome videos. Uh, I, I keep meeting South Africans just randomly in New Mexico and Texas and they're all really, really cool people. So when I watch his channel, it's, it's pretty awesome channel. Uh, definitely neat to see them do things. So the other day they used, uh, like I mentioned, I'm doing the wheat straw to bed my pens. Well, they use wood chips and I would have never, never thought of wood chips, but you know, if, if I lived somewhere where there was just a train load of trees and a big sawmill, hell, that'd be, that'd be great. Especially, you know, if I had a lot of moisture where it rained and snowed and everything else on, on it and, uh. Because it'd break down. It would definitely break down over time. Uh, if they're, especially if they're finding up wood chip. But now that's the great thing about YouTube. You just find stuff out all all the time. Uh, but once you, once you get past watching epic rap battles and and music videos for two years, you, you can find a lot of cool stuff on YouTube. But thanks for watching. You know, comment, subscribe, like, don't like it. You know, and... Tell me what you want to see. You want to, uh, like I said, we're gonna do some more farming videos. But if you want to see some, if you want to see some ranching videos that 
you know, a lot of behind the, like what goes into making the ranch work, like we're doing a lot of fencing right now and stock tank repair and just a lot of the in-between stuff that keeps things going. Uh, I'll get some videos of that if I can, if you want to see them. If you don't, well then I won't worry about it. I'll just do what I need to do, but yeah, let me know. Thanks.